Hi there and welcome back to Station Road and into part four of the layout extension. Now leaving off from part three we had actually cut some new track bed panel to actually put down on the existing layout where some remodeling had to take place. Now in today's video it's a case of anchoring down those track bed panels and continuing on with the reshaping at the other end of the existing layout where the mainline tracks will extend out beyond the edge of the layout and down and into the extended area. So today's video is a short video that really just covers the uh, addition of the actual extension framework, installing that to the side of the existing layout and installing the track bed panels, which uh, in some areas are MDF and also the plywood. So I think without further ado, uh, let's just get into it. So we've now got the track bed substrate anchored down and as you would have seen in the video I've just screwed the panels down to the framework. I didn't want to glue it as well because if by chance I needed to alter something or change something it'll be easier for me to unscrew it and maneuver it around if necessary. And over on the incline over there I've actually used liquid nails which is basically a very strong bonding glue that uh, doesn't dissolve foam because the risers underneath I've cut from condensed foam 
for that section and of course the toolbox has been weighing that down while that dries. So the next stage is actually the other part of the layout where the extension is going to come out and it is this area here. Now I've taken away all the back panels and also <laughs> completely ripped out the old track bed that ran in underneath there because it was just pretty rough and I thought let's just redo that section through there. So where this line is here that's going to be cut and we're going to reform the track bed from there on and of course you'll see one of the lines coming out which will run along this extension which I've just currently G clamped to the side here so that I can sort of gauge what kind of space we've got there and then we have the single line now which will run through on the original track bed that ran through and out the other end. So we'll be getting on with this, I'll be cutting out new track bed panel and getting that sort of into position potentially as one piece and then the next step will be securing the new framework which is just leaning up there onto the existing baseboard here. So once again as per the other area of the layout where I planned out the track bed substrate I've used a cardboard template as well just to sort of work out roughly where the track is going to go and align up any adjoining pieces. So this particular section I will cut out of one piece uh, because the supports that will go in underneath uh, will be able to support the entire area here and as you can see we have the inner line which will branch out and go where the original track used to go and then we, of course we have the new track bed that sort of runs on the outer edge of the existing baseboard and here I've just sort of basically sort of pot some loose battens of timber under here to sort of roughly work out uh, what height of elevation I need for the support. Now um, this is a very sort of basic method at the moment. Uh, I do actually sort of go through the process of accurately measuring out the height of each of the risers based on the percentage of the gradient. So it sort of works out on this particular area of the layout that it will be roughly a 1 in 40 gradient which is a lot better than what it was. I think it was 1 in 30 or 1 in 35. No, it was a 1 in 30. So we've now improved that to 1 in 40. And we've sort of moved on a bit here because I've now put in the risers, which are just timber battens that run through, and they're evenly spaced, roughly about 30 centimetres apart. And of course, you can just see there in the top left corner, we've got the new framework attached as well. Uh, we also have the new track bed that runs in underneath the layout through there. Now at this stage everything is all just sitting there to sort of get an idea of track alignment and what particular pieces of track I'll be using. So in this situation and generally in most situations I sort of use a combination of flexi track and also set track particularly on the curves if I can sort of get away with set track it certainly makes it a lot easier. So the outer track here the one that's closest to the camera is actually flexi track and that curve is actually lined up equidistant to the middle track which is actually Hornby fourth radius and then the third track in is also Hornby fourth radius as well. So as we come down to the other end of this outer section we now have this framework joined to the new extension framework and as you can see I've just bolted that through. Now I did actually have some guide screws uh, installed there which of course I can remove if necessary but basically the idea behind this is if ever this layout had to move then the theory is it should make it a little bit easier to dismantle into sections. So here I've added in some 12 by 12 mil batten just to raise the level of the extension baseboard up to match the incline 
that's coming down from the other end of the layout and this is where the 5mm MDF meets the 7mm plywood and now with the first panel installed of plywood and you can see there where down in the bottom right corner the MDF and the ply match up for a flat and level track bed and I've also just placed some set track here just to get an idea of the curve running around so the outer curve is the fourth radius Hornby and the inner curve is third radius Hornby now all of this section of track is basically hidden it won't be visible in any scenic area so in terms of radius of the curves it's not really that important it's just as long as all the stock that I have gets around it and also the distance between each tracks is far enough apart for uh, particularly my Mark 1 coaches to not collide with each other. In terms of the legs that I've actually installed on here now I've just placed one leg here the back half of this extension is actually resting on a batten that's anchored to the wall of the actual garage and moving on a little bit further we actually applied the remaining plywood for the track bed and pretty much the same method as was shown earlier in the video it is basically screwed down in this particular situation I don't think I'll be adjusting this in any way so I have actually glued it as well uh, just to give it that extra strength so you can just sort of see down here in the bottom right hand corner of this you just start to see the beginning of the elevation or the incline so that it comes up to meet the other section of the extension which runs around the back of the existing layout so once again here I've just sort of randomly placed some track just to sort of get an idea of where it's going to go and also you can just start to see the makings of the fiddle yard along the back there and sort of looking out at a wider view once again you can see the subtle incline rising up to meet the other outer section of the framework and also at that right hand edge you can see the upper level track bed which will continue out and pretty much run over the top of the lower track and then running across the back wall of course is the track bed for the fiddle yard as well so there we have it for now i've sort of had to make this particular part four episode a little bit shorter than what I'd planned to do. I was hoping to sort of lay some track as well but as we all know uh, getting hold of track at the moment is proving quite difficult so uh, not just purely from the price point but also just simply the availability as well. So I'm kind of having to buy bits of track one at a time rather than charging into the model shop and buying up large so the plan is in part five where we'll actually get some of the temporarily laid out track permanently fixed down and also wired up as well uh, because one of the things that I really want to do before I sort of go any further at all is actually test some trains on the incline and just see how they do and whether or not I may need to install my DIY magnetic adhesion system. So until part five comes out, take care everyone and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye for now.